Okay, we're live. <laughs> <I'm excited. laughs> uh, hi, everyone. Um, this is the Reading the Renaissance live show for the Woodville's quarter, which has now been like the Woodville's half a year. <laughs> it really <laughs> is. The past eight months. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, but yes, Julia, do you want to introduce yourself? Past eight months. Oh, yes. Oh, ah, Did sorry. I tried to open uh, our live show on the other <laughs> channel. And I, I was like, so many buttons and I got stressed <laughs> out. Okay, sorry. Um, yes, introduce myself. I'm Julia. Uh, my channel is Shakespeare and such. And I don't know what else I should say. I'm excited to talk about the Woodvilles way more than I thought I would be before we like I know. actually started absorbing I know. all this media. <laughs> Yeah, because <laughs> to be honest, like, I feel like the books were, like, I was, like, yeah, this is, I mean, The White Queen, like, the book was really good, I found. The nonfiction for me was a little, yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> but then the show, I didn't actually get around to watching the episode of The Hall of Crown that I was supposed to. Um, so you have to take the floor on that one, but... I got it. No worries, because it was it was great. Honestly, yeah. I loved watching the Hollow Crown because yeah. um, my favorite. Well, I don't know if they're my favorite. I haven't finished all of them yet. But so, like in my big old project of like trying to read every Shakespeare play yeah. ever, because that's my brand. Um, like those. Uh, well, I don't know if that's fair to say. I guess the the. <laughs> words oh my gosh <laughs> um those like first couple of henry the fourth is that what it is no the sixth henry the sixth part one two and three and richard the third um <laughs> those ones uh are the ones that was like the hollow crown and those have been my favorite history plays so far okay. is what i'm trying to say yes <laughs> took a long time to no, say. i understand <laughs> um yeah, I bought Richard the Third when I was in England, so like three months ago or something now. Mm -hmm. And it is on my TBR. I just have to keep pushing my TBR because I've been in like a slumpish mood. Yeah. <laughs> I feel that. Yeah, I'm trying to look up my actual ratings because I think we ended up going pretty similarly for both books. Yeah, I think. Yeah, I think that's a good like idea. Yeah, I'm going to look up mine as well because... Okay. I just want to make so, sure you know what I'm talking about. Yeah. Okay. So the White Queen, I did actually quite enjoy. I almost bought it today at my library's used book okay. sale, but it was the, I, there's no cover of this book that I like. I hate yeah. all of them equally. And it was the show cover, which I wouldn't mind terribly if it didn't have the, now a Stars TV show. I know. Logo. It's awful. And like on her shoulder. And I was like, I, I can't spend a dollar on this. Yeah. <laughs> Um, but I gave it 4.2 stars. Okay. So I liked it. I, you know, I don't mind like a really long spanning story that they're like, okay, we're going to walk you through about 20 years of their life right now. Yeah. Like, Let's do it. Yeah. So I liked that. But um, obviously, like the show and the book were very different experiences because we got a lot more of Anne Neville in yes. the show. <laughs> and Which I she's my girl. Yes, I totally understand. Even just, I mean, you probably have other reasons outside the show why you like Anne Neville. I know you do. But like, for me, just watching the show, I was like, okay, I can totally get on board with the Anne Neville, like, fan club or whatever. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, yeah. I gave The White Queen 3.75, which is like, it's basically a four star. Yeah, I mean, not too far off. Yeah. I just found, like, there were some points that were a bit, like, I don't really care about this part. Like, I was excited to get further along in the story, and that's why I, like, kept reading it so quickly. But there were some parts where I, I don't know, just the pacing was strange. I, I read it so long ago that I'm, like, <laughs> I can't even. Yeah. Um, I know. We both, I think this is the first thing we both did for this yeah. quarter was read The, the White Queen. Yeah. So it's, like way back in the recesses of our memories but um I'm just yeah 
plug in my computer quickly, but you can keep talking. <laughs> I'll say, I think, I mean, while we're talking about the White Queen and just yeah. kind of comparing it to the show, I think the show really tried to portray Edward much more favorably than Philippa Gregory yes. did in the book. Yeah. Because I kept waiting to be like, show him cheating on her, show all his mistresses. And it didn't come until like the last couple episodes. Yeah. And even then, what's her? And it was just, yeah, it was just like two scenes or something. Like it wasn't. Yeah. Yeah. And it, like, honestly, that's kind of a, a big part of their relationship was that. So I'm like, yeah, uh... we have like lots of conflict based on that from what I remember in the book. Mm -hmm. well, yeah, they totally did. And the, um, you know, Mistress Shore, whatever her first name was. Yeah. I just remember it because I remember her rhyming shore whore. <laughs> so charming. Um, yeah. Like she was in like one and a half episodes of the show. And in the yeah. book, like, she was around a long time. And then she came back and was like really relevant towards the end. And I felt like they could have used her better in the show. I don't know. Yeah. And I, in the show, she, um, she ended up getting with Elizabeth Woodville's yes. brother. And I was like, yeah. did this happen in the book? Cause I don't remember I that. I don't think I, I it might have or maybe like the, the nonfiction like maybe mentioned some I don't remember I think maybe mm. but I don't remember it being like a big thing I think I remember it being a maybe people thought this was happening mm. not like a confirmed I could be making that all up as well so. yeah. it's very possible <laughs> But I actually, I just finished the last episode of the show right before we started the live. Wow. So it's fresh. <laughs> yeah. My, I had like time set aside this morning to like finish it and watch the episode of The Hollow Crown. Mm -hmm. And then my grandma ended up showing up a day early. So I was like, okay, <laughs> <laughs> that's maybe less important a little bit. Yeah. That's cute. <laughs> but yeah, but. That's my explanation for why I haven't consumed all the media. But. No, I mean, yeah, it was, I watched The Hollow Crown a long time ago, too. It was back before I moved. So Yeah, wow. A little while ago now. So long ago. <laughs> You've changed so much since I our know. last <laughs> um, But, um, yeah, I mean, I liked, other than, this one. This is the only one I have in person to show as evidence right. that I absorb <laughs> it in any way. Yeah. Um, other than this one, I really did like all our picks for this yeah. quarter. <laughs> <laughs> um, I do think I'll eventually probably watch the White Princess miniseries yeah. that they did following. Yeah. Um, I got so <laughs> I got the White Queen DVD from my library. Okay. Because I was like, this is going to be much more practical. And then I moved and I went, oh, my DVD player is Katie's DVD player. Now I don't have a DVD player. Oh, no. <laughs> so I was like, okay, I'll just like start a free trial of stars yeah. and try to like watch it all in a week. That didn't happen. So now I'm paying for stars. And I'm like, well, if I'm already paying for it, I might as well watch the rest of their shows. You know, I'm going to watch. Yeah. The Spanish Princess. Princess. Yeah. Exactly. It's the best one. The Spanish Princess is so good. I'm so excited to watch it. I've been wanting to watch it since before it even came out. But I was like, ah, chronologically, I want to watch these other things that yeah. came out first that are like kind of related. Not really, but. They, yeah. yeah. Even the fact that it has two seasons is just like, just makes me happy. Uh -huh. <laughs> um, show. Yeah. So what was your rating for the Woodvilles? Let me look it up. I'm pretty sure I gave it like three stars because I do feel like it did its job in like teaching me about the Woodvilles. Yeah. Like I can't say like I didn't learn anything about them and it helped me kind of cement the fact from the fiction in terms of Philippa Gregory, yeah, I gave it a flat three. Yeah. Um, <laughs> what I literally wrote in my Goodreads review was, it was drier than a bit than a hay bale, but I can't deny it was informational. <laughs> I um, remember reading that review. I like looked it up a few weeks ago. What did Julia think? <laughs> pretty much that. Very, um, very good review. I would yeah. agree. Oh, and I liked that the author like made it a point to be like. You know, their name died. Their, ugh, their name died out because of 
all these crazy things that happened and their yeah. sons and brothers and stuff being killed, but their name will live on forever in history. <laughs> and I was like, that's a cool sentiment. And yeah, I love that. That's true. Um, I love that. Yeah. And you know what? I have one note about this book that was like my favorite thing in it. Okay, I'm so was, excited. I was like, I never knew this. And I think it's so cool. Let me actually find the exact page. Um, so I can read it, but it's not even specifically about the Woodfields. It's just about history. But I was very uh, in awe of this. Page 133. This tiny, tiny font, really. I know. It's awful. I was like, this won't take long. It's so small. And I'm like on one page for five minutes. Um, okay. I think this is when they were talking about like trying to prove if they had actually if um, Edward and Elizabeth had actually been married legitimately right. or, not or whatever. Um, but apparently laws at the time said that a couple who exchanged vows of marriage in the future tense were married once they consummated their relationship. Oh. So that was like a more informal marriage no, that the church kind of frowned upon. But then if you said your marriage vows in present tense, you were married right there and all the witnesses present were like, yep, they're married. I like, feel like <laughs> I, do, I don't have any memory of reading that probably because I was like, please get <laughs> through this book. It took me like 60 days or something oh to God. read. <laughs> yeah, wait, let me find out how long it took me because I feel like it was pretty yeah, similar. I'm actually going to look. Yeah, let's see. I started reading it on May 26th and I finished on July 27th. Yeah, I started June 3rd, finished 14th. So okay. not <laughs> yeah, not not our shining moment, but um I think I don't know, I'm excited about our future nonfiction. Books. I know. I am. That's the hard thing is like I feel like for both the qu quarters so far, mm -hmm. we've been like <laughs> I don't know our books have been like other than the white queen which was like I would say that was like a really good book like I mm -hmm. really enjoyed reading that one the others have been like okay like that's fine but I'm really here for the historical fiction show that I wanted yeah. to <laughs> that's why I wanted to do this <laughs> yeah yeah so, I don't know. um oh yeah because I have the Joan of Arc. I was like, for some reason, I couldn't remember what was coming before yeah. the Ottoman Empire stuff. And I was like, Joan of Arc, you literally already read one of them. Um, yeah, I'm like intrigued. Yes. And I for think... Joan, they're not TV shows, right? They're both movies. No, they're movies. So. And I yeah. think it'll be maybe the opposite. I don't know. Because I really like, okay, this is maybe spoilers. We shouldn't talk about already talking about the next quarter which is supposed to end this month but uh -oh. <laughs> anyways i i enjoyed the first one that i read of the books but, yeah. okay but yeah you'll find out about it yeah. who knows when <laughs> um i don't know i mean it depends on how quickly we can read the, the joan of arc yeah. nonfiction. And i can't Fox find movie. So anyways, this is okay. Anyways, I, <laughs> yeah, moving on. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, yes. Okay. So yes, I gave the Woodville's two two point five stars. Yeah. So I'm just slightly more negative than you are. This is what we're finding out. I think yeah. Just generally, I'm like a little more lenient with everything. I'm like, <laughs> well, that's you did your job. I I learned facts. Yeah. I read words. You I wrote just. Them. I think comparing it to our last month's nonfiction, I actually liked, I'm now liking last month's or last quarter's nonfiction better than this quarter, like better compared to this quarter. Fascinating. Because I think now reading this month's non, this, oh my goodness, mm -hmm. this quarter's nonfiction, <laughs> reading the Woodvilles, I realized that the Lucrezia Borgia one was written a lot better. Mm, that's that's fair. just what I, I don't know, have yeah. experienced. But. I can't even fully process because I read Blood and Beauty and Lucrezia Borgia. What was, was that what the title of the nonfiction was? Yeah. I read those like 
within like two days of each other. Like I finished the nonfiction and flew right into the fiction. So in my head, I'm like, maybe it's all real. Maybe it's all fictional. I don't know. I think because I did audiobook and physical book or audiobook and ebook, it was a bit separate, but I read them at the exact same time. So I Mm. think they're just the same thing in my head. Also, (laughs) not to stay off topic, but at my library book sale today, I bought a historical fiction about Julia Farnese and I'm very excited. Okay. Yeah. We're just going to start like a Italian renaissance, but we're just going to reading the Italian renaissance. <laughs> Our book club just becomes the Borgia book club. <laughs> That's the only about the Borgias. <laughs> Wouldn't be off brand. Yeah. <laughs> uh, any, anyways. <laughs> yeah. Back to the Woodbills. Okay. So I wanted to like warm up. I don't have a lot of questions that I've prepared, but I did think it would be fun to do like a kiss, Mary kill. Yes. With, like the three. Now I'm going to like call, say their names incorrectly. Okay. I always, they're the York, the York brothers, right? Oh, oh my gosh. Yes. <laughs> oh no. Helen, I'm stressed already. Yes. The Yorks. Yes. Right. <laughs> yes. And listen, every, every time, I don't know if you know, probably because you were in England. There's like this stupid nursery rhyme that's like the Grand Old Duke of York. Yeah. Every time I hear their names, I sing that. I'm like, get out of my brain. <laughs> Don't want okay. it here. <laughs> so we know it's correct. Yeah. <laughs> Possibly. So I thought it would be, do, do you want to do a kiss, Mary kill? I mean, you go first. You're the guest. So. Yeah, I'm stressed out now. Okay. Yeah, and it depends. George and Edward. Yeah. Okay. But (laughs) this really, really, really depends. (laughs) Are we talking historically them or the white queen versions or the hollow crown versions? Because I would not go near humpback Benedict Cumberbatch with a 10 foot pole, Helen. But the white queen Richard on the other hand. I know that's, yeah. Uh, Okay. How about we, how about you do both? We start with the white queen. You could do the hollow crown. I can't speak to the hollow crown, yeah. but yeah. actually, the hollow crown, all three kill. Okay, <laughs> they're all out. They were all old. They were all ugly. They were all jerks. I hated them. Okay, so let's start with the white queen, and then we can do like historically. Okay, the white queen. <sighs> Man, yeah. Okay, you know what? I'm gonna be maybe contentious or maybe you'll surprisingly agree with me i'm gonna say kill edward because my first instinct was sleep with edward but he slept with so many women i don't know what's going on down there it feels a little risky that's true so i'm gonna say kill edward what did we say kiss kiss mary kill is that what we're doing i don't know (laughs) i was like wait maybe i should I mean, it's it's whatever you want. (laughs) I'll I'll just kiss George because David Oakes has a nice face. (laughs) That's fine with me, you know. We, we, I think we kind of hate him, um, but not by proxy. But yeah, (laughs) we've seen him portray too many jerk brothers to actually like him very much. But I'm sure he's got a nice mouth. I'm sure it would be fine to kiss him. And um, then I guess I'll. I'll marry Richard as, okay. as uh, iffy as I feel about that. But, you know, I love a curly head of hair. So. I know. That's what's, that's what's getting it for me. I, yeah. Yeah. I think, I think I'm, so I, okay. I'll start with, <laughs> <laughs> see, it's hard. I'll start with, I think I just have to kill George like I feel like I just I mean just for me personally I would if we're doing kiss I guess I get like if you're sleeping with yeah like, it's like that's why it matters too much um kiss yeah I'll, I'll kiss Edward and then I'll marry Richard or shall I yeah because <laughs> Of his looks. <laughs> We're like, we wouldn't marry any of these personalities, but <laughs> if there's someone I have to look at every day, I pick that one. <laughs> okay, but historically, oh, that's a mess. Then I'll kill George. Yeah. 
Um, I feel like I'm swapping them historically. Like I'm swapping Edward and Richard. Oh, yeah, I probably would too. Um, Because, you know, like, I mean, it would be very stressful to be Richard's wife. Or, yeah. I mean, Edward's wife. It would yeah. be stressful to be either of their wife. Yeah. <laughs> it would be very stressful to be Edward's wife. But, like, at least you knew he kind of, like, knew what he was doing in terms yeah. of like, ruling the kingdom. And you didn't have to, like, fear for your life every day. Yeah. Like, I feel like Richard's uh, uh, hold to the crown was a lot more tenuous. And I would right. be, like, fearful That's every day. That's how I feel, too. I'm the exact same. Like, I just, like, I felt like with Edward, he, like, he had this, like, I mean, maybe I'm just reading it from the White Queen, the book, but like, <laughs> just like his, he seemed like he wanted peace and he was yeah. all like, I just, you know, I want peace for the kingdom. Yeah. I, but whereas oh, Richard, it was like, and any other question I have, I don't know if you can remember this mm-hmm. far back when you finish. I don't know when you finished the White Queen. <laughs> it was sometime in the summer, okay. but early summer. <laughs> Maybe May? I don't know. May. Oh my gosh. Um, I'm going to look it up while you ask me. But who did you empathize with at the end? Oh my god, that's that's what I love the most about the White Queen. Yeah. Is because I kept switching sides because I was like, I'm in Elizabeth's point of view. I'm rooting for her. Yeah. And then I'm like, wait a second. <laughs> I forgot all this stuff about like, you know, like these people. I'm like, yeah, they're right. <laughs> so it's it's difficult to say, and yeah. especially in the show, I was feeling yeah. that because they did it so yeah. masterfully, switching the perspectives yeah. and seeing Margaret's side, and seeing like because as like the viewer, you know that Henry's going to be king, yeah. so you like I know this is going to happen, but all these things keep happening, and she's so yeah. sure about it. And then like in the last two episodes, she's like, maybe like I was wrong, like. I've done this awful thing. And then at the end when she's just like staring up into the sky and she's like, I am Margaret Regina. And yeah. it's just like an You'll epic stay moment. on your knees because I'm yeah. the mother of a queen. It gave me a king. what's the Borgia woman? Oh yeah. Um, Cam- what's her name? Yes. I got it. Hold on. We know it. Katarina Sforza. Yes. It was that same sort of, I was like, I like, I just, you want to root for them because they're like the strong Mm -hmm. woman that doesn't pass down. Well, I mean, imagine Helen being me and it's like three frenzied mothers and I'm like, "Ah, I want you all to do the best thing for your children. Ah." It stresses me out. But I do think I liked um, Margaret's tactics best yeah. of all three of them because like elizabeth was like a little more sneaky mm. um and the witchcraft <laughs> we didn't even talk about how philip and gregory gregory was like she's gonna be a whole witch in this yeah. you're gonna just embrace it yeah um so that was like a different kind of feel versus margaret who's just like i know i'm right and I'm going to pray and my son will be king. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah, Margaret. <laughs> and she'd like still be yelling at people. And yeah. She'd be like, I'm right. Yeah. Um, but it, oh yeah. So. That scene, that scene where um, they're like taking Henry and she's like, you'll take him away like he's a doll and I'm a little girl. Well, I'm not. I'm his mother. And I was like, ah. oh, I loved it. So good. So yes. Good. I thought it was like going back to the witchcraft just a little bit. Mm-hmm. Why isn't my sorry my computer's apparently not plugged in? There we go. Um, um, so in the nonfiction, mm-hmm. I thought it was so interesting how they were saying the author was like, well, like lots of families said they were related to mythical beings. And I was like. <laughs> That's because that's something like now we'd never be like, yeah, my like great grandfather Zeus. You know? <laughs> like, <laughs> Everyone's running around like Percy Jackson. Yeah, exactly. But they were like, it. The nonfiction was just like, yeah, it wasn't a common thing for like a richer families to say I'm related to this mythical being. I was like, okay, go yeah, off. Whatever makes you like, feel powerful. Yeah. <laughs> But it's very weird. Yeah, it was so interesting. Yeah. And it's funny too, 
I mean, I guess, I don't know if it was like a per. No, I do know it was a purposeful choice of Philippa Gregory to be like, women and power, witchcraft. That's like the association yeah. in history. So like, I get what she was doing, but I also wonder like how much she knew like of other families doing that too. Right. And, like, being like kind of normal for yeah. like, that time in class and everything. But yeah, so funny. <laughs> really, if we did that nowadays, yeah, no. it's so funny. <laughs> like it, it's just something that if you said that in like conversation, like that you were related to like a mythical being, people would just be like, yeah. uh, no. <laughs> You're not though, but thanks for sharing, I guess. Uh, anyways, yeah. What a, what a weird, a weird thing that they all did. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm, I'm taking a course right now called the age of Elizabeth the first. Um, yeah, which is very exciting, which is, it's definitely, it's a lot past, um, the time that we're, we're we were reading about, but I don't know, I'm excited to like, I don't know, read, because there's still like the Renaissance is still happening. Yeah, that. I was gonna say, that's probably more true, like, in terms of England, yeah. like their real Renaissance yeah. is very much Elizabethan, so. Yeah. That's exciting. I just bought a book about her, too, at the library books. <laughs> Goodness. <laughs> I'm a mess. I can't stop buying this. <laughs> I know. But they're all things I'm excited about. So yeah. So you'll read them eventually. It's exactly. fine. Yeah. It's true. Yeah. Um, what did I want to say about the white queen? I forget what I was going to say. Well, if we have a lull, I'll talk about Anne Neville because I love her. <laughs> I mean, we can talk about Anne Neville. Like, okay, great. Um, yeah. <laughs> so let me let me take you back to okay. how I how exist in the world. Because I in school, I don't know about you, I never learned about the War of the Roses in high school or anything. No. Like, we're not in England, so my teachers were like, "We don't care about that." Yeah. <laughs> um. So my first like learning of that was in the Henry the Sixth plays as previously stated yeah and in richard the third shakes so it focuses on richard obviously yeah. um i think it's act one scene two if i'm not mistaken <laughs> you see poor lady anne <laughs> grieving like so her her um first oh my god i forgot we have to talk about how awful he was i know her first husband i was like, know right no <laughs> Oh my gosh, Helen. <sighs> I was like disturbed. Like I literally, I can't remember if I did it for my Instagram stories or if I did it to send you a mess to send you a message. I think I deleted it either way. But so I like started recording my reaction to that scene of right after they got married because of the way he was talking to her. And I was like, I'm so sad, I hate this. And then it escalated and I was yeah. like, I can't send this. This is awful. Oh, no. I hate it here. It's so bad. Yeah. So that was terrible. I guess that was one thing I was going to say about the White Queen, too, was um, it was like because they were trying to show all three sides, like they're like, oh, this side has a good point. This one does, too. This one's not so bad. Then she like brought Margaret of Anjou and yeah. her son. And she's like, here's the real villains. Look yeah, at these exactly. people. And I was like, wow, what did the French do to you? My goodness. Yeah. <laughs> it's harsh. Um. Uh. And I mean, yeah, her poor husband, too. We saw what yeah. happened to him, so. So. Struggles. Yeah. Um, anyway, so backing it up. Yeah. Um, I like to think that it was not a terrible marriage in my brain. Anne's first marriage, that is. Um, what was his name? Is his name also Edward? I feel like everyone's name is Edward. Yeah, I think his name was Edward. Yeah, that's so there's, confusing. There's way too many Edwards. Because they named their firstborn Edward, like Anne and Richard named their firstborn son Edward. Yeah. And Edward. Elizabeth has Edward. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so that Edward. Yeah. <laughs> so in this scene of Richard III, Mm -hmm. Anne is literally like it's like Edward's funeral procession. Yeah. So she's like mourning their hi Nana. Um, they're like carrying his, you know, coffin or body or who knows, whatever they did back then. 
Um, and they're like, you know, it's a funeral procession, yeah. as I said. And so she's like crying and Richard <laughs> shows up and he's like, wow, too bad about your dead husband, right? And she's like, you should know you killed him. <laughs> and so the whole scene is just them going back and forth being like, you're you're the devil. I hate you. You should marry me. No. Yes. <laughs> oh, my goodness. I'm and really looking forward to reading. It's, it's so such an iconic scene, Helen, that I was like, this one scene, I was like, this is one of my new favorite Shakespeare characters. I love her. And then learning that she's like a real historical person yeah. who I can retroactively stand. <laughs> I'm like, yes. Love me some Anne oh. Neville. Um, which is so funny because I don't support Warwick at all. I was like, this no. guy sucks. <laughs> but his daughter yeah. is cool. I felt, yeah, because I think the White Queen, the TV show, did such a good job, like, really fully fleshing out her character, and yeah. we see her through it, like, like, I feel like with Elizabeth, um, we see her, like, when she's already, like, a, an adult, like, she's, she's a lot more self-assured, and she, you, you don't ever worry about her, really, because you mm -hmm. feel like she can take care of herself, whereas with Anne, you see her go through these different periods of, like, not knowing who to believe, like, with her parents, like, yeah. she, and then with, like, and just, like, going through all these, like, emotional things, and, yeah, oh it's gosh. just, I think her character is, like, really well done, and then I felt so bad with her and Richard at the end, when he, like, she's literally in that dress. He's like, oh, that's, a, you look nice in that dress, my love. So would, so would uh, Elizabeth. Like, so, so would the other Elizabeth. There's 50, <laughs> 50 Edwards and 50 Elizabeth. Uh, Ugh, I hated it. Literally, it's like, it's, it's like a drinking game. It's like, watch the White Queen and drink every time someone is mean to Anne. And you'll be very drunk by the end. Because it's uh, very sad. It's so sad. I hate it. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And what was that? Harry Margaret, you're right. <laughs> and also, I can't believe, because the book was, I think, a lot more vague. I mean, it showed Elizabeth of York's feelings towards her uncle, which we were like, okay, yeah. okay, okay. <laughs> but, like, they made that apparent. Yeah. But in the show, they were like, we're going to have them kiss. We're going to have them kiss. And I was like, all righty okay <laughs> wasn't expecting this but then Richard no. Was like, no and I'm like you already did it yeah it was and it's, a lot <laughs> it's so interesting in the book and like I haven't read I guess the Kingmaker's Daughter is the one that focuses on Anne yes. Neville which is I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep going crazy. with the Cousins More series yeah. I'm excited <laughs> um but in the White Queen if as I um <laughs> yep <laughs> I'm sorry, it's I just had my first week back to school, so I'm like, brain does not work. Yeah. Um, unless I'm mistaken, they have it where like Elizabeth, little Elizabeth, is telling her mom like, um, uh, like uh, the the king's wife, like they they're in support of like me being oh, yeah. the next queen and all this stuff. Whereas like I wonder if you because it. it the show followed like the three books whatever mm -hmm. they're called and the king's maker's daughter i wonder if you probably see the side of anne which is more like what we see on screen that's what i'm suspecting but yeah it's, it's really interesting i don't know yeah i like it it's all such a downer i was thinking about this earlier because i was thinking about the tv show rain <laughs> yeah um and it was like it must have been so cool to like play Mary Stewart but then in the back of your head the whole time aren't you just going like oh but she definitely died so yes. at some point this is died. Even though, like, in the I don't know are we gonna spoil the show I don't we're gonna spoil everything we talk about watching, so. um yeah the in the show it's so much like Francis might die oh no he doesn't die but we're like you're yeah. going in real life, he died, like, I don't know, like, two years or, like, a year yeah. after they were married. Yeah. Like, exactly. it was such a short, like, time that it's, yeah. yeah. So, like, that's the thing about, like, all this historical fiction is, like, you can, like, enjoy the ride, but in the end, you're, like, unless they're going an alternate history I know. route, this is going to end badly. <laughs> like, uh, 
Oh my God. Speaking of death, it's such a funny detail to me. Speaking of death, <laughs> um, it's such a funny detail to me that like Philippa Gregory was like, and George chooses to die drowning in wine. <laughs> It's so specific, and it's not the real thing. I was like, that's so specific that that must have been how he died, right? No. No. <laughs> and it was dark in the TV show. Like, I it's know. Very funny in the book, but in the show, I was like, <laughs> and, then, <laughs> and then you like see his face. I was like, no, thank you. Yeah. I will look away now. I did not want to see that. It was dark. Yeah. It was so intense. <laughs> Speaking of death, <laughs> that's going to be historical a... fiction. Is just yeah, because that's when the stories end about the characters is when they die. Oh, that's true. I mean, can't that be said for all of us though? That's <laughs> when the story, when the character dies, the story ends. You know, <laughs> for all of history and all fictional characters. Come on, or you can think of it. The story's never ending because oh. history continues into the future. Their name carries on, right, Susan? Yeah. Yeah. That's true. I'm, am I going to be really annoying if I tell you I need to go use the bathroom? No. That's and I leave you all alone? <laughs> yeah, I don't know what I'm going to say. Yeah. Um, I'll think of something. Okay. I'll be right back. Bye. <laughs> All right. <laughs> okay, everyone, I'm going to open my kombucha now because I didn't want to interrupt and make a really loud noise earlier while Julie was talking and while I was talking, but I really hope it doesn't um, explode everywhere. And I also don't know if I can do this with my current nails. So this is what your uh, interim live show period takes place. Takes place? Occurs. Inc Incl oh my gosh, I can't speak. Uh, two people are still watching. I don't know how. Okay, so this is a watermelon kombucha taste test. Um, it's from this thing called Cove Kombucha. I don't know if you guys like kombucha. Let me know. That kombucha is fermented tea, if you weren't aware. I've never had this brand before, but it's a craft brewed in Canada. So... <laughs> And it's very good, surprisingly. I didn't know if watermelon and like fermented tea would go well together, but they do. Um, yes, that was good. And I was really thirsty, so I'm glad I did that. I also have, this is just snack time with Helen. Um, thank you, Mary Margaret. <laughs> um, I, it was my birthday a couple days ago. And I always get macarons on my birthday, but I was sick, so I went today instead. And I got my birthday macarons from Whole Food, and they're and they're lemons. Whole Foods, they're lemon macarons. I really can't speak. Um, but while Julie is also away, uh, if you guys didn't know, Joan of Arc is our next like quarter, and it was supposed to be finishing this month, the quarter. But I'm sure we'll have the live show in like. Maybe this month, I don't know, but maybe October, more more likely. Hi. Hi. I heard it was snack time. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but, yeah, I agree with you. We will probably not do our next live show also this month. Yes. Because that's a lot. But I do think without a TV show, we'll probably be able to go a little bit faster. Yeah. The TV show was like, yeah, that was a big undertaking, I feel like. Yeah. But, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, it's funny because we're like, we watched three seasons of the Borgias. <laughs> and then we're like, a mini series of oh, mini so much. episodes. Meanwhile, we have The Magnificent Century. Which and is like 50 episodes. Yeah. Something crazy. <laughs> Like Who knows when we'll finish that. Yeah. But I, I actually, I, anyways, let's, I keep talking about our future months and I'm like. Because we're excited. Yes, I'm very excited. I feel like because we've been doing this one for six months now, it's like, we're like so excited for the, we're still excited for this one, but it's like, 
we've been talking about this together <laughs> over Instagram for six months. So <laughs> we're a little over it because we've expressed our thoughts. <laughs> yeah, I got like Julia's very um, constant TV show updates, constant yeah. miniseries updates. Yeah, I think really everyone on Instagram was getting pretty yeah, reliable exactly. updates from me, but you were also getting like one on one. Extra. I, I mean, I love it. Please keep them coming. Yeah, you got the <laughs> behind the scenes content. Yeah, <laughs> by watching. Everything else was just me going like, "Look at Anne! Look at Anne! Look at Anne! Like, Anne! Anne! Anne. <laughs> Pretty much. I oh, yeah." I was gonna talk about the age age makeup, like the like the oh, yes. they did. Yes, I didn't like it. I thought it was kind of good <laughs> because I felt like their tactic was eye bags and pale skin, and that's it. That's how I'm aging, so <laughs> it rings true to me. But I just felt I was like, and then sometimes like Richard would look younger in the next scene, like. Cause he's a he's just a baby face. I really I is. think they couldn't make him older, but I thought they were more successful with Elizabeth. I thought they aged her kind of well. Elizabeth and Edward, that beard they put on him in the I was like, uh, Jeremy Irons. I'm sorry, but yeah, <laughs> that was the one that did not work for me. Elizabeth's aging worked for me. None yeah. of the men. None of the men. Yeah, that's true. I yeah. just felt like they didn't look like I felt like Anne was okay. I was just like, I also didn't know how old they were supposed to be. Yes. It was so like, Anne started the show, I mean, like her character started yeah. the show very young. So, and but they had a son and he was like 10 by the time he died. So clearly like over a decade had gone by. Yeah. A lot of time. I feel like the whole show probably spanned like 15 years, maybe more. Why did I think it spanned like 40 years? No, because they, <laughs> oh, 40? I thought you were going to say less. And I was like, no. Um, I mean, maybe. I don't think they were that old. It, didn't, it definitely did not because oh, like Elizabeth's probably like 20. How old? See, this is, I just don't know how old people are. That's what I'm going to look. Okay. How old Elizabeth Woodville was when she died. Um, Hold on. I can't do mental math. I'm not that kind of teacher. Um, uh, oh, she was 55 when she died. That's kind of old. But that's what I mean. I feel like they were older because in the show, I'm like, these people are like, they either, because the paleness, I was just like, they just make them look sick. Yeah, which in Anne's case works. Yes, in Anne's case, I was like, okay, this makes sense. But Richard, I was like, why is he like why does he look like he's dying yeah. like he started the show my color and then reverted to casper by the end of the show you know and had like these really like dark circles down to here purple i was like is he okay like are is he supposed to be like really sick or is there something i'm not picking up on or the stress the stress of running a kingdom <laughs> Because for Elizabeth, I felt like it made sense that she, I was like, she's pale because she's like lost her husband and she's really yeah. stressed out. But for Richard, I'm and like. She's been like cloistered yeah. away. So mm -hmm. she's not getting a lot of fresh air and sunshine. Yeah. Yeah. Which, can you imagine like having to go into sanctuary twice in your life? Like literally having to run to a church so people don't murder you. No, that's, like, so, that's so wild. So stressful. Me. And that was like, well, I guess it was in the White Queen too, but like in the Hollow Crown, there was like the big scene of the men being like, we have to go to the church and get the princes. Yeah. And then the one guy's like, you can't, they're in sanctuary. And they were like, oh, we can and we will. And he was like, well, you've worn me down. And I was like, excuse me. <laughs> like, maybe it's it should so, take a little more convincing. It's also so interesting that like literally Edward's wife went into sanctuary twice i mean he'd only gone into sanctuary once uh -huh. when edward broke the sanctuary like edward is like my wife can have sanctuary and uh you know i let her take advantage of that but when it's someone else i'm just gonna completely like <laughs> disregard everything even though you know <laughs> the rules do not apply anymore uh, i don't know
Ah, privilege. I know. That's. I was just gonna say he gave me very much like frat boy energy. Yeah. Like true. I was like, it's like I'm King Edward. I can do whatever I want. Like. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I really. Edward has never sat very well with me overall. Uh, but especially after reading the White Queen, I was yeah. like, buddy, this ain't it. <laughs> yeah. No, thank you. And then I feel like I can't remember. I think I sent you like a video um, when I was watching the Hollow Crown. But I just need to show you because this man was like young when he became king. Like, remember, that was like a big deal. Yeah. They saw the three sons and they right. were like New York brothers and they were like in their prime. I need to show you this man because I was like, <laughs> you are not in the prime of your life, sir. You are approaching a midlife crisis. <laughs> What's happening. Um, I almost start midlife crisis. Find <laughs> 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 him, Julia. Do you need to talk about something? <laughs> no. But you know what I will say for the Hollow Crown. At least, no. Okay, well, hold on. Let me show you. Oh okay. God, it's worse than I remember. <laughs> okay, out of here, Mabel. I don't know if you're gonna be able to see him. Look at this man. Uh, this is like the beginning of the show. The man is like. Late 40s. Yes. That is. I hate it here. <laughs> Especially after this was Henry. Hello. Okay. Like we, we went from handsome king to like okay. this. I'm like, I don't believe this is the playboy. That like. I know. Like sw switch the actors. Like. <laughs> but his performance. Yeah. Was I'm sure. Yeah. And if, the, you're, if you're doing a Shakespeare play then it's like you sure sort of have yeah. to but yeah. um what was i gonna say about him though take a step back shoot okay wait walk me backwards because i was gonna say something crisis oh yes thank you <laughs> no why that worked um what i was going to say was i appreciate that the hollow crown actually cast like a woman who was probably in her 30s or 40s as Elizabeth Woodville. Because I was okay. like, yeah, because the age difference in yeah. the was like two years. And I was yeah. like, this is not enough of an age difference. Like, she's an older woman. Than I him. know. I'm like, she that's has a big two deal. sons. Like, yeah. She, that's why it's, I felt like in the White Queen, it was so easy to forget that she yeah. was as old as she was or whatever. Yeah. Because like her sons would come in and that's when I'd be like, oh, actually she is a like a, I don't know. Like, yeah. Oh, she has like a 14 year old son. I forgot. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. also, like, when they started aging people in The White Queen, I was just like, I now have no memory of who anyone is. Like, when they got new actors, all of a sudden it was like, I was just like, I don't. Yeah. I don't know who you are anymore. I'm sorry. I, I think that's why every time when she was in Sanctuary and her, her gray sons came to like pop in, that's why every time in the script she was like, "Oh, my dear son, how are you?" Like she had to say because they were like the it's audience was not going to after every it. time. Yeah, <laughs> it probably was, and we didn't even notice. We we're just like, yeah, "Yeah, yeah, Richard Gray, that's him." Uh huh. Because we're like, we don't want to seem like we don't know what's going on. We're like, "Oh yeah, I remember. I remember." <laughs> oh, that's him. That's her son. Yes, I got it. Yeah, but on the other hand, the Hollow Crown like casted an older actress, like older comparatively than Rebecca Ferguson. Yeah. And I was like, yay! But then they had the older Edward, and I was like, it doesn't yeah. work anymore because now they're the same age. They're just both yeah. older. So if anything, he looked older than her. She looked great. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I don't know. It just irks me. Like that's an important point because like people had opposition to being like. Are you sure? Yeah, exactly. this, like this woman's older than you. She already has sons. Yeah. She's not like on our side. Yeah. All this stuff. Yeah. I don't know. Oh, it reminded. Wait, <laughs> why am I drinking out of two different things? <laughs> oh my gosh. I was like, this feels different because it's not my mom. <laughs> um, I was going to say something about early in the show, too. And now I'm trying to remember. Oh, I want to talk about the absolutely iconic scene slash historical event. I guess I feel like they said probably some version of it happened and they aren't yeah. sure which because it was like circulated in gossip. Yeah. 
but the iconic scene of her being like, I'd rather die than yes. be a mistress I knew you were with a knife in her neck. I know. It's amazing. And that's the thing. That was what I was so surprised by in the Woodbills when they were like, yeah, this actually probably happened. And I was like, oh my god, yeah. amazing. <laughs> If I was Elizabeth, not an Elizabethan, because that's older. If I was uh, a, an English, you know, peasant during this, during the reign of York, yeah. I would have absolutely lost my mind if some gossip, you know, in the town was like, did you hear <laughs> the queen threatened to kill herself? And everyone was like, wow. <laughs> I would be like, that oh. is cool. I support our monarchs. <laughs> Yeah, and it's it's also so interesting to think about, like, would he have actually married her if she hadn't? Because part of he's like, yeah, he just likes her, like, spunky personality. Like, it just, he was, she was just showing how, like, cool and quirky she was by saying that. Yeah. But then the other part of you is like, no, she was actually doing that. So, like, so, like he wouldn't, like, have sex with her. Yeah. Which she like didn't want him to. So yeah. <laughs> I'm not like other girls. I won't let you rape me. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That's quirky, so, all right. Yeah. But and it's just like, yeah. Because part of me's like, well, girl boss. And then the other yeah. part's like, actually, no. Like, <laughs> I know. I love it because I love it for her. Yeah. But I hate it because I'm like, you expect me to root for this romance after exactly. this? Scene? After that's the scene. Like, this is where their relationship starts. Yeah. Ah! <laughs> Scary. But it is a, a moment that lives in my mind rent free. I really and, love it. And also, when he does start, like, cheating on her with Elizabeth Shore or whatever, mm -hmm. and he's like, excuses, we're not young anymore. I was like, what do you mean by that, sir? <laughs> like, <laughs> what is, that was literally, he was like, Elizabeth, we're not, we're not young anymore. We're not the two kids standing under the oak tree, like, or whatever. I was like, yeah, but what, what's the correlation? He's like, Elizabeth, you don't bring knives into the bedroom anymore. No. There's no more knife play in our lives. Elizabeth lets me do that. <laughs> like, what are you trying to say? Like, what does that mean? He's had yeah. like eight of your kids. What, like, what more? <laughs> like, also, she was never that young when you married her. I You're know. not young anymore. I was 32. <laughs> like, <sighs> yeah. Everything Edward says. I'm like, you seem like you're a fine king, but you seem like you're a not great husband. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, that's what I should be researching next is like, Edward the, what is he, the fourth? Edward the, what, is he what? the fourth? For, yes, yes. The fourth. Edward the Fourth's uh, <laughs> policies. In, I, said, like, I thought you said Edward the Court. <laughs> what? I don't remember that. <laughs> oh my god! Wait, that's what I did want to say though. Is <laughs> that this book was like, yes, we have dug up his body, and he was a tall king. <laughs> he was six <laughs> two. He was, in fact, tall. <laughs> I, like, that killed me. I was like, oh, my God, Elizabeth, I would have been thirsting, too. I know. I think I sent you. I sent you a message. And I was like, why do we need to know this? And you were like, hey, Edward. 62 in medieval England? He was probably, like, a giant. Everyone else is, like, stunted and malnourished. And he's like, like everyone else lady. Is four feet tall. <laughs> He literally looks like when they were like filming Lord of the Rings and everyone else is the hobbits and he's Gandalf, except hot. The hot! <laughs> That's so good. You heard it here first. Gandalf the hot. <laughs> oh my gosh, wait, hold on. I just, you can talk, but I need to Google something. I can't even talk right now. That's amazing. Okay. <laughs> oh. Just have to see if it's ever been done. Yes. Yes. You made me want to search sexy Gandalf Halloween costume, and it has been done. No. <laughs> sure has. Women in beards, but with like a big old slit up their robe. <laughs> amazing. <laughs> 
just give the men all the confusion. <laughs> like, so am I attracted? Maybe. Yeah. Um, oh my goodness. Oh man. <laughs> Our conversations always correct divulge so weirdly. <laughs> I would love that t-shirt. <laughs> Well, that's our that's our uh, new official uh, book club merch that we're yes. coming out with next yeah. next quarter. Yeah, like, I'm trying two years. I'm trying to convince all my book clubs. I'm like, listen, it'll be like four of us wearing this T-shirt as an inside joke, but merch would be so funny. That would be. I I mean, I'm down. Gandalf but hot is but a hot. good shirt. Yeah, and, and just, you're walking around, and everyone's trying to figure out what your shirt means. <laughs> They're like Gandalf, but hot. Are you Gandalf, but hot? You think Gandalf is hot? What does this mean? <laughs> and you're just going about your life. <laughs> oh, it's so fun, man. Oh, we like went on such a tangent that I feel like I had more to say about something along the way, and I don't know what it was. I know. Um, I think. The costumes were beautiful. Yes. I loved the costume. Almost definitely. Yeah. Like Elizabeth's coronation. I was like, oh, wow. It's so pretty. And another then, thing. Yeah. Sorry. No, I, was, I was literally just going to say another thing about the aging makeup. Yes. <laughs> I don't know why. This, Go ahead. this is the thing. But when Anne was in that scene that I mentioned before, being in that dress, it was like her face is old and the rest of her body was just like she was like a 20 year old. I was like, huh? Yeah, what is her, like, I don't know the actress's name. She did great. Yeah, she was really good. Um, But I'm curious how old she was, because I think, I think she was certainly, like, in the middle of the yeah. range of I how mean, she had to play. I just started assuming they were all 50 at the end. I was like, <laughs> this has gone on for so long, they must all be in their, like, 50s. <laughs> but maybe I'm just... Yeah. Um, but I do think Faye Marseille, what a cute little name she has. 1986. How old is she then? I'm letting you do all the Googling while I just oh, like. <laughs> She's 35 now, but when did the show come out? <laughs> it was like 2010. Was it oh, not? She was like 20 ish or 25. Yeah. So that makes sense. I thought she portrayed the the younger Anne so believably. Oh, wow. Like I was like, this girl's 15 and I won't be convinced otherwise. I was like, yeah. Yeah. And she was so sweet. Like I literally, I remember every single scene that has Anne in it. <laughs> you know, it just like yeah. locked itself in my brain. But like at Elizabeth's coronation when they were like, long live the queen. And she's like, long live the queen. And he's like, knock it off. So cute. But she, I think she did so good throughout the whole, like, process. Like, even just when she's with Richard, like, sort of slowly making him, like, you should be king. Do this. Do that. Like, yeah. and that was so good how you saw her, like, slowly, like, you could see her father in her. Mm -hmm. Like, it was just, like, the, the literally the kingmaker's daughter. Like, it yeah. was so, yeah. So yeah. good. The title has moved on to the daughter, you know? Like, mm -hmm. she's the kingmaker now. She is, yeah, exactly. Yeah, I love it. Love that for her. I just, yeah, she was great. And that, oh my gosh, the scene where, um, I think it was, like, right after he had rescued her at the battle, and then he was like, do you love me, Anne? And she was like, what? Mm -hmm. And he's like, do you love me? And when you're king, because yeah. then he'll forgive you. And I was like, Richard! <laughs> I know, like, that was so, that was, and it's so well done. And you could just see in her face, like, what? He knew what he was doing. <laughs> <laughs> Those two killed me. It was like so hard to watch their ending because I know. they were the couple, like, as they were forming that I was rooting for the most. I know. Even knowing how things would end, I was like, I love you too. I support you. Yeah. So, it was yeah. so sad. That was a bummer. And I did feel bad for Richard at the end. Like, when you see him, like, dying on yeah. the ground. Like, that's yeah. so... And I'm like, 
like the it was just it made me feel bad for all three of them because I'm like there was so much like not George like no. I, okay, George <laughs> but like just Richard and like seeing like when Richard and Edward would be together and how like I feel like in the show it got across like this a lot of like miscommunication between like Richard and Anne thought like Elizabeth was like scheming against them when mm-hmm. she was being fed misinformation and she thought yeah. they were scheming against her. Whereas I think in the White Queen, the book, of course, because we don't see all sides, mm-hmm. we just see it as, oh, these people are all like doing bad things to Elizabeth. And we, mm-hmm. but yeah, I don't know. I just thought the show actually did a really good job of just I agree. encapsulating everything. Yeah, I think it's going to be really dangerous for me when I read The Red Queen, because I'm going to yeah. be like, Margaret Margaret Beaufort can do no wrong. I, I love know. her. She's flawless. I, I love I, I, love, I, really love love her. I just, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I did feel bad for her, like, first husband. Not first husband. Her, like, old yeah. second husband. The other guy <laughs> she married, yeah. Uh, yes. <laughs> but, yes, because he was, like, I, I know that she was like, you should stick by me or whatever. But at the same time, like, I just felt, because he didn't understand he, when he's dying. And then she, mm, it's just I, so, know. I don't know. I know. And then she had her whole thing with Jasper. And I'm like, I girl. I know. <sighs> yeah. So much going on. What was I going to? Oh. I think my only, this is going way back to when you were like, I felt bad for Richard dying on the, on the battlefield, which by the way, I learned today happened on August 22nd. So we just passed that anniversary of Richard dying in battle and Henry the seventh taking yeah. the throne. So that's kind of cool if we had been on time. Yeah. <laughs> um, I guess it still wouldn't have been, it would have been like no July, right? Whatever. <laughs> Close enough. It's fun. Um, anyways, but I was watching that scene, first of all, bored because I hate battle scenes in yeah. everything ever. I'm like, this is boring. Someone, someone talk, please. Yeah. Like, oh. exactly. <laughs> I hate just like watching movement. I want I some development here. Um, but then my brain went to the hollow crown because Richard had lost his horse and I kept waiting him. I kept waiting for him to do the iconic, a horse, my kingdom for a horse, like calling out for a horse and no one giving him a horse. And yeah. it just happened. I was no. like, oh man. You missed their opportunity. I know. Like it would have been just like a cheeky little like, hey, Shakespeare. <laughs> would have been nice. Everyone, everyone in every text ever should just have a little hey, Shakespeare moment. Yeah. Hey, Shakespeare. <laughs> I mean, we like, acknowledge you. Don't they all? Because they all, I mean, Shakespeare developed the English language a lot. So I don't know. You could argue that. <laughs> That's so true, though, because anyone who uses like any of his idioms, you're acknowledging well, exactly. Shakespeare. I'm taking a Shakespeare course this semester, and it always makes me think of you. I just. As it should. <laughs> yeah. And I'm taking one next semester because. <laughs> this makes me so happy for you. Yes. What do you have to read? Um, Merchant of Venice, Measure for Measure, Measure for Measure, Measure for Measure, and The Tempest. Ooh, I love and it. then, so that's like the first semester is like problem plays, comedies, and romances. That's like Ooh. the theme. Second semester is the tragedies. So when we get to that, I, I hope they don't just do like the, cause I've read Othello and Hamlet and Romeo and Juliet and like all of those ones. I hope they do like more. I, I mean, that's the, those are the ones that have a lot to talk about as well. I mean, everything has a lot to talk about, but yeah. I don't know. <laughs> King Lear is nice to talk about though, the tragedy. It's not my favorite, but it's interesting to talk about. The class. Maybe I'll get you to be the professor. You can come to Canada. I wish I was that qualified. I would love to. If I if I had the qualifications to just apply to be like a professor professor of Shakespeare, yeah, I'd do it. I'd be like, sorry, preschool. <laughs> Bye. Go talk to these adults now. I can't teach you four year olds Shakespeare. You're too dumb. I have to. <laughs> I have a book that's called like How to Teach Your Children oh. Shakespeare, and I'm like. I wish I was like annoying enough to use this in the classroom, but I know I'm only going to use it for like my future. (laughs) 
But it's um, so cute though. Yeah. When I saw that book on the shelf years ago, I was like, oh my God, my whole personality is right here. <laughs> They've condensed me into a book. <laughs> um I forget. I had something else I was gonna say, but then mm -hmm. I forgot. Um, I was going to say, well, I wasn't going to say this, but I'll say it now. Tell me your thoughts on Izzy and George, because we didn't really address them at all. And they were bigger in the show than I expected. Yeah. Them. I, I like Izzy's actress or actor, or whatever, first of all, yeah. like I love Demelza from Poldark, basically. <laughs> I forget what her name is. Eleanor. Eleanor or Tomlinson, I think. Right. And so I, that to begin with, like she, but she was hard to like because she was so, like, I think I actually, I sort of liked her and George together at certain points because it was just fun to see them like continuously like be the mean couple. Like they were just like, yeah, they're the couple, they're like that couple from your family that you invite to your house that you don't really like get along with super well, but you know, you're like, okay, hey, you're my family, so you have to yeah. be here. But like, I don't know, like, I, I obviously, I, I liked Izzy more than George, of course, because he's just awful at like many points. And, but I don't know, because she was also very mean, especially to Anne, like, just like, she I and I know she was scared of George as well, mm -hmm. but at the same time, like she also could just be mean. So, I know. Yeah. What it about was like, you? Yeah. She was a hard character for me to like latch onto, I guess, because my feelings kept changing about her. Yeah. Like I'd be like, Oh, your aunt's sister and Anne loves you. I'll like you too. And then she would be like going through something hard. And I'd be like, Oh my gosh, I feel for you. And then she would be like, Elizabeth's a witch and she cursed us. And I'm like, Well, you're right, but you're being a little mean about it. Yeah. <laughs> and then she would like do something awful and like lock Anne up. And I'm like, Well, now Izzy, what's going on here? So yeah. like I just kind of was like, uh yeah just inconveniencing me <laughs> exactly it's like I don't know it didn't feel plot devicey necessarily her character but she was only around to sort of like push different storylines forward yeah. like with her interactions on base with her interactions with other characters yeah I and agree that's what like made her important to the story yeah. but it wasn't like she herself was like oh you know, I'm interested in this character. So. Yeah, I agree. Because I think if she wasn't Anne's sister, mm -hmm. her existence in the show would be pretty negligible. Because it it was, like, only briefly mentioned in the book, like, oh, and George yeah. married Warwick's daughter. Like, whatever. Yeah. But she wasn't really in the book. I yeah, assume she's just... more so in Anne's book because right. she's a sister. Yeah. But, um, like, you know, she didn't really serve the plot. Yeah. She just didn't was she... a footnote. <laughs> I, I always thought she died in the White Queen after she lost the baby. In the book, I thought so, too. I was watching the show, and she, like, survived childbirth, and I was like, didn't she die on the show? Yeah. I'm losing it. So maybe we're both right. Well, I think she did, because in the book, it's like, oh, and his daughter's dead, too. And then you're yeah. like, okay. Yeah. <laughs> but like, it wasn't just, like, a... I'm pretty sure... That's correct, but okay, good. Yeah, I thought I was the crazy one, and I was like, I thought it wasn't just the baby, I thought it was Isabel, too. But that makes sense why we would then feel like she's more of like a plot <laughs> device character because they kept her around just for the plot, like, yeah, just so Anne can have someone to cry over yeah. later, yeah. you know. <laughs> yeah, it's true. Yeah. Who else haven't we talked about much? Hmm. I mean, okay, so I was gonna say with the nonfiction. Yes. The half star was probably just for is his name Anthony? Her brother? Yeah. Yeah. So it's spelled Anthony, but they said it Anthony, so I started calling okay. him Anthony. Yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Anthony, it was probably just for his poem. But that he wrote before he died. God, the half star 
was a hundred percent like it would have been a t-star but i was like this is so interesting oh my gosh i love that yes i was like yeah because in the both in the nonfiction book and in the white queen book they made a lot more focus of how he was like a poet and he wanted yeah. to travel and all this stuff and in the show he like traveled once and then came right back and i think yeah. like maybe he like read a poem or like Elizabeth Shore read yeah, one of his poems exactly. or something. I was, just I was like, like, this is a part of him. Acknowledge yeah. that he's a poet. I know. And it's so cool that you can like actually read the poem that he wrote before he died. I like know. right before he died. That's yeah. like wild. Like really that's is. so cool. Yeah. Yeah. He that's... also, sorry. No, go ahead. I was just going to say the actress from the Christmas Prince trilogy on netflix I, Christmas Prince. I was okay here i'm gonna like embarrass myself right now because in the show did he have in the beginning of the show he didn't have a beard maybe he had one later in the show there was yes. like a point in the show where i was like this guy's kind of good looking do i know him from anything and i looked at it and i was like it's that guy ew <laughs> immediately it's like he's not good looking anymore <laughs> i love the christmas prince trilogy i watch this like yeah. once a year no. listen like, i'm i'm a night before christmas kind of girl okay, okay? i can get behind that yeah. i also really like the princess switch i like the first one the mm -hmm. second one i didn't get all the way through i haven't actually watched them i've only watched two someone has like commentary videos making fun of them yeah. Who is it? I don't know. But yeah, I've watched them by proxy, but not yeah. actually. But I do like, I do unironically like the night before Christmas. Yes. That's, it's just fun. They're fun. That's, that's all I want in yeah. life is just like a man to travel through time, fall in love with me, <laughs> and then become like a mm -hmm. modern man with like old gentlemanly sensibilities. <laughs> old gen I love that. <laughs> yeah. Same. You know what? Same. <laughs> yeah. Cause there's listen, my mom, this is again going way off topic. Uh my mom loves Hallmark Christmas movies. So like when it's the holiday season, she is like recording them, watching mm -hmm. them, and if they're good to her, she'll like save it to watch with me again later when I'm over. And last year she made me watch. I need to find the name of the movie. And it's the exact same thing. It's a man, it like starts in the past. Yeah. And then he gets like this clock, and this clock magically travels him through time. And then he falls in love with a woman in the present, and it's Christmas time, and blah, 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 and you know, like all that stuff. Yeah. But I love the inherent drama of like, do you return to the past with everyone you know and love? Or is it worth it to stay for this person you have a connection with? Like, that's so good. It's like a very high stakes version of The Bachelorette. Yes. <laughs> so, I don't know. Maybe yeah. that's not a good comparison. But. So if you're looking for a cheesy Christmas movie, and a timeless Christmas. So I have a, I also have a Christmas, Hallmark Christmas film recommendation. <laughs> Yes, let us hear it. Um, so the the town that I was living in in the UK is called well, it was very close to this town called Nairsborough, and I would spend time in it time in that town all the time. Like it was like a ten minute walk from my house. Mm -hmm. And there's a Christmas film and the town is like the cutest town ever. Like it's like so British. It's so nice. There's a Christmas film called The Very British Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> and it, it takes place in this town Aww. and it's like i just i haven't seen the full film i've only seen like the trailer of it but i want to watch it and yeah it looks really good because it's <laughs> so cute here let me let me read this okay this little synopsis opera singer jessica's flight to her concert in vienna gets delayed and she is stuck in a remote area of england the only place to stay is a bed and breakfast in an enchanting village run by a handsome widower named yeah. Andrew. I'm sold. I know. Her. Children. There you go. It literally, that's a trope that'll just get me yeah, every time. I love it. 
I've just added it to my watch list on Letterboxd. So <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Oh, I love it. That was my one goal in this live show. I came into it thinking, how can I mention this Hallmark movie so that Julia will add it to her watch list on Letterboxd? Like, I'll be seeing Julia today. How can I plug <laughs> this movie that was filmed in the town that I would buy? Oh my gosh. <laughs> okay. Do you have any last thoughts i feel like we've been talking for a long time i know it's funny because like 20 minutes into this i was like how are we gonna fill this I time know. and i'm like we've been talking for an hour and 15 minutes <laughs> literally 20 minutes and i was like oh no i haven't brought enough questions to this and now i feel like there aren't even like the way we have so many things to talk about it's like it doesn't make sense to like come armed with a list of questions because i didn't even do that the first time i was yeah. like all right, we'll talk about ratings. We'll talk about feelings. <laughs> That's and, what else? I love that you brought a game because yeah. I love a book a book club game. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> what's happening to my voice? Uh, my final thoughts are: I am very excited to continue in the Cousins War series by Philippa mm -hmm. Gregory, even though she and I still have beef. I have not forgiven her. For the other Bolin girl, nor <laughs> have I forgiven her. Well, okay. I was gonna say I was mad that Anne wasn't in the White Queen a lot, but knowing that she has her yeah. own focused book, kind of yes, is there a pass? Yeah. But we still have beef. Um, so I'm excited to do that. Excited to continue paying her stars and watching their shows. <laughs> they have a um, the first like chronological book in the series is Polish Jaquetta Woodville. Yes, I want to read that one too. Yes. That's the one I think I'm going to like go to next. Just I... to be spoiled for history. <laughs> yeah, I know. Isn't that weird? You feel like you have to go chronologically even though it's like all of it's yeah. already happened. Yeah. And frankly, like the Red Queen and the Kingmaker's Daughter are going to be no surprise to either of us because yes, exactly. we've watched the show, but it's fine. It's cool. Um, yeah, those. I look forward to your thoughts when you eventually read Richard the oh, Third. And I, I am excited to respectfully unhaul this and educate Great. someone else about the Woodbills. <laughs> That's my spin. I'm educating okay. others. Yes. I already absorbed this information. Uh, okay. Well, I think that that about sums it up. Yeah. I don't. I don't. <laughs> I know you already talked about what we're doing this quarter, but let's run through it again. Okay. Um, um, so we have Voices by David mm -hmm. Elliott, which is a um, poetry adap adaptation. What's it called? A novel in verse about... About Joan of Arc. So that's our, like, fiction for the month. Mm -hmm. And then our nonfiction um is by regine pernu but yes. i'm getting confused because he's written multiple books about joan of arc it's called like joan of arc by her witnesses and herself or something okay. like that yes that is what it's called i think because he has two books or maybe yes. even three okay right i think this some of them cover different parts like he they overlap Joan yes. of Arc by herself and her witnesses. This is the one. <laughs> oh, I didn't even mark it as want to read. How stupid of me. Oh, Kara's already read it. She gave it four stars. That's amazing. <laughs> and then we're, what are we watching? I have it on, in my notes. Yes. Um, so one is like a silent yeah. film. And, oh, Yulia's here. <laughs> right for us to leave yeah. um although i don't know if i just missed that comment yeah one is a silent film and then the other one has <laughs> the actress who plays the nerdy friend and never been kissed does that help anyone <laughs> so we have joan of arc 1999 and the yeah. passion of joan of arc 1928 exactly there also I do have final thoughts now because I found my memes that I made. Okay. While 
Yes, I'm to see. So we have Richard from the White Queen as I hate you, but I love you, but I hate you. <laughs> Versus Richard from the Hollow Crown. I've had enough of this. <laughs> so I love that you made those. That makes yeah. me happy. And then like three things later is just naturally just a screenshot of Anne Neville. Of Anne Neville, of course. Just why would I not have? I was really trying to look for the one that I had made forever ago. That's like the Simpsons do it for her. <laughs> but I covered it all with drawings and photos. <laughs> Julia, that's amazing. Oh, I found it. I found it. <laughs> you can't really tell because it's so small, but. That's amazing. Do it for her. I love it. This is iconic. This should be a segment every month, every quarter. I keep saying month. I know. Like we, yeah. we cannot do this every month. <laughs> like we're like six months behind. Um. Yeah. Um, hold on. Okay. Wait. So if we, we've both read the poetry one, right? Yes. Okay. So we have two movies, one nonfiction that isn't super long to be no. fair. So, oh, thank you, Yulia. Just called me a meme queen. <laughs> we have um, a good recommendation. From oh, good. Yay. Um, so theoretically, I don't know. What gives me pause is knowing that after this, we have to watch The Magnificent Century, which is going to take yeah. so long. And I don't even know yet, like, Should where I can find it. You can watch it all on YouTube. Oh, God bless. Please. Okay. I've already watched an um, an episode and a half. I watched it when we first planned this because I it, it looked very intriguing and it's actually quite good. It's very fun to watch. Good. So good. yeah, and it's something you can like watch really easily. Like I don't know in the background of something. Excellent. Okay. If we we don't have to like officially schedule it right now, yeah. but if we reluctantly said we'll talk about Joan of Arc sometime in October. Would yeah. That feel comfortable? Yes. That okay. feels good. <laughs> okay. And then we'll try to do um oh my gosh, what's the the person's name? Yeah. Her, Harem Harem Sultan. Sultan. Harem. Um, I don't know how to say her name officially, but like the Ottoman Empire ish yeah. theme. We'll try to do that by December. And, yeah. like, maybe we can just see how far we get in the show, and maybe we'll pick a point to stop just yeah. for the live show, and then Keep if we wanted to do, like, a supplementary, like, half an hour live show, if we finished it, we could at a different time to just be, like... I yeah. respect that. That sounds good to me. But, yeah. And then it'll be the end of the year. And we have to come up with new themes. Oh, my gosh. I. It's been... I can't believe it's been that long. I know. I feel like this idea was just like a little baby in our brains just I know. a little while ago. A small child. And here we are now. <laughs> oh, goody. <laughs> okay, Julia is going to join for the next round. And yeah. Yeah. Yay. Okay. okay, so thank you for coming, everyone. Yes. <laughs> And we'll hopefully see you in October. Yes, that's the plan. <laughs> Bye. Bye.